Hello my beautiful co-creators, Lilu here. I'm in beautiful Paris today with an amazing man that is a uh, Nobel Prize of Medicine in 2008 that is responsible for having found the virus of the SIDA in 83. Uh, this is absolutely incredible. I'm so honored and, and feel blessed to have this conversation and be able to do this in English. Oh my goodness, we just had a 30-minute interview in French. Thank you, in Professor. English with a French accent. I love it. Isn't that charming? Huh? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you for all the wonderful work that you do. And I want to particularly speak today about autism and the Lyme disease. Yeah, that is a big one. Huh? The word on, on AIDS itself, you know, AIDS, the, the research is not finished because we, we don't cure yet the patients with AIDS, with HIV infection. So I'm working also on that and hope to, to see the eradication of the infection, mm. finding new factors which could contribute to the disease as well different from the virus, but associated with the virus. Mm. Now, talking about uh, more common diseases, yes, autism is uh, really an epidemic everywhere, especially in the United States, and we don't know exactly why, but uh, our clue uh, is uh, there are infectious factors, because we are using new technologies which are highly sensitive to detect some form of microbes or bacteria in the blood, of the uh, the children, and this leads to treatment which sometimes cure the patient, the, 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 the child. This is not well known, this is just beginning, but we have a group uh, in France uh, also associated with some uh, American doctors mm -hmm. uh, which are working on the antibiotic, long-term antibiotic treatment of autistic children with some very uh, impressive results. Uh, so I think we should uh, let know this uh, new new way to the doctors, to the American doctors, also to the parents. And actually I'm participating to a meeting uh, in Chicago in, a in May uh, about this. And I will, m m of course, mention uh, the work of my colleagues in France, which are very impressive. Mm. Now, uh, other diseases, uh, also on the other side of the life, you know, for aging people. We see also an increase of uh, neurodegenerative diseases like uh, Parkinson, Alzheimer, mm -hmm. uh, multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. And we are also here, by our technology, we detect microbial infections. And uh, some, of course, our uh, record is not very large now, but we have anecdotal, anecdotal cases in which we can cure multiple sclerosis at the beginning by an antibiotic treatment. Uh, antibiotics don't mean only one compound, several compounds, and perhaps also compounds acting on the parasitic, parasitic infection, fungal infection, which also accompany, uh, I would call that, a dysfunctioning of the immune system. I think they, they clue with that at the beginning. So this leave uh, uh, the, the bacteria able to, to grow, to multiply, especially the bacteria of the gut, and this lead to damage in, in the brain. Mm. Of course, by some mechanisms which have to be studied, but the fact is we can improve the conditions at the beginning by antibiotic treatment. Mm. This is good. Um, is, yes, uh, the hope is to uh, have a long, longer life, but with human capacity to yes. live that life, you know, to uh, take advantage of the, f I think the, the, the last day, the final days are the best, but if we live in, in good health. Yeah, yeah and, to, and to cost less also to the yeah. social security. I mean, we're talking about it in the French yeah. version of this interview. There's a huge, huge problem. It's a big challenge right now, and we're trying to really get the politicians to bring this topic inside their, their, their campaign in France, because th these are really important cases and research that needs to be done that is absolutely not even talked about in their debate. Absolutely. And uh, this is also the case in, uh, in uh, many European countries, even in developing countries. You know, we see the same kind of disease, cardiovascular, neurodegenerative diseases in India, in China, in Africa. So this is a worldwide s problem and we should find uh, the same solution everywhere. Mm. Tell us about this uh, infection, uh, this bacteria um, that is uh, the same bacteria as in the Lyme disease that is that we can find. Some people say there's 80% of people that, that are carrying it with them, Borrelia. 
Borrelia, yes. Borrelia was uh, uh, found first of the agent of the Lyme disease. Lyme uh, is a small village of the Connecticut. Mm -hmm. But now this disease is uh, spread uh, ev almost everywhere. It's not always caused by the same bacteria, but uh, probably some related bacteria. And the, so this implied that there are long-term treatment also by antibiotics because Apart from the acute infection, we have also a chronic infection which could last many years with many damage on the brain or the, or the, uh, or the joints. Uh, the chronic fatigue syndrome is also related to that. Mm. So it's an uh, enormous problem as well, probably uh, increased also by the, some environmental factors, not only the bacteria, but uh, nutrition, uh, stress, uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, even pollution, and even now we are questioning whether you know this enormous increase of ele electromagnetic pollution. Uh, we are completely surrounded by this. We are using them, of course. Uh, what are the long-term effects? Mm. We we don't know. Mm. We don't know, and there are people which are highly sensitive to this. Mm. So there are some. Uh, Oxidative stress, so biochemical change in our cells and used by the radiation. Oxidative stress, which is an increase of uh, oxygen species, oxygen molecules, highly reactive, which can cause mutation in DNA, alteration of lipids and proteins. And this can be, I won't say cure, but really su most suppressed by taking the proper antioxidants. So uh, we have a clinical trial very promising on this uh, now in France and we hope to, if, of course, if it is confirmed to uh, publish this uh, because we think not only those people are concerned but everybody will be concerned, of course, not the same level but probably we are exposed to a lower level to the same effect of long-term effect of the radiation, electromagnetic radiation. Mm -hmm. So our future doesn't look dark, I would say, provided we take the appropriate measures. Mm. How is, uh, I know you spend a lot of time in China, how are they compared to America and France? Well, they are, they are concerned by the same disease, including HIV AIDS, also the many viral infections, hepatitis B, C, and also concerned by the aging of the population. And uh, Shanghai has the same uh, life expectancy uh, average than uh, the European countries. Mm. So they are suffering from the same problem. Mm. And uh, finally, I just want to talk with you about uh, radio frequency treatment. Th is this the future? I think it's one of the possibilities because uh, it seems that every bacterial viral DNA has a special uh, emission of radio frequencies and we can perhaps uh, counteract this by exposing the patient to slightly modify waves which may uh, suppress or neutralize the frequency emitted by the viral or the bacterial DNA. But this is for the future. Exciting. Uh, Thank you so much, Professor. Thank, Thank you, you for this moment and uh, to do this interview in English. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my beautiful co-creators. Much love from Paris. Thank you. <laughs>